Hey guys, Jay Metcalf here. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how to clean your saxophone. And it's a pretty big job as you'll see. So it's not something I recommend you do on your own. However, if you're someone who's determined to do it anyway, or you just wanna watch how something is done, this video is for you. I'm not talking about the daily maintenance you should be doing after every playing session, you know, swabbing out your horn. I made a separate video about that that I'll link up on the screen and in the description below. Also, I am in no way saying you need to clean your saxophone. If you're the only one playing your instrument and as long as it's not filthy, you should be fine. But during this very uncertain time, make sure that you wash your hands a lot. Stay home if you can click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Here's all the tools and materials I'll be using and you could find links to them in the description below. I'm gonna be cleaning my Yonagasawa A991 alto saxophone today, mainly because it's the dirtiest out of all of my saxophones. Now let's go through the... Hello? Non, c'est pas c'est pas le bon moment. Merci. Au revoir. Oui, je sais, monsieur, que c'est pas le bon moment. Excusez-moi. Serious? <laughs> Now? <laughs> you, you want to talk about electricity? Uh, telemarketers are gonna are gonna have a field day with us with this. They know you're home. And it's funny. Earlier, I went to the store to get a couple of things that I needed that I didn't have. Don't go to the store. Bad idea. There's like hoarding going on. Just, I'm gonna make do with what I've got right now. Anyway, back to how to clean the saxophone. The first step is gonna to be to take all the keys off of your saxophone. So we're gonna need our spring hook and our screwdrivers. I've got this paper towel here where I'm gonna put all of my hinge rods so I don't lose them. And the pivot screws I'm going to leave in place once I take the keys off. Now there's different ways to go about doing this. One way that I find to be helpful is to start at the top and take all the keys off going down. So let's start with our palm keys first. Normally you could take that hinge rod out with your fingers, but sometimes it might be more difficult and you would want to use some pliers. Do not use normal household pliers, please. That's one of the things you could really mess up your uh, hinge rods with. I've got these pliers, these come from Music Medic. I'll link to them below. What's nice about them is they grip things and they're not gonna damage or leave marks on the metal. Now, something you can do to avoid losing or misplacing these hinge rods is marking on your paper which one is which. So that's my E flat. Now, something else to keep in mind, you've got these springs on here. These are very pointy and sharp. Sometimes they're even a little bit rusty. Be careful that you don't hurt yourself with these. They can go deep <laughs> into a finger. Okay, now I'm gonna take my spring hook and I'm just gonna undo a bunch of these springs. Be gentle with them while you're doing this. You don't wanna break one of your springs because that's one of the things you're gonna to need to go visit the repair technician if you do. Over time, sometimes these springs rust or they get a little bit weak and very brittle and too much pressure in the wrong direction can snap them easily. So I think I've got all the springs undone. Now I'm just gonna to proceed to remove the rest of the keys. Now I'm just taking my G key off. Notice I will just loosen one of the pivot screws and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right back in. This way it doesn't get lost. We're not mixing pivot screws. Most of the time you can remove a key by just uh, loosening one of the pivot screws. If there's any resistance and it feels like that key doesn't wanna come out very easily, then you wanna loosen up the other pivot screw as well. Don't force anything, use very gentle pressure. Also, normally I would be doing this in my lap, but for the purposes of this video, I'm doing it on the table so you could see what I'm doing. Now for me, this hinge rod comes out super easy because I've got lubrication on there and it's not stuck. This is a spot though on a lot of saxophones, older saxophones, it could be stuck. 
and not want to come out. If you run into something where the, the hinge rod is stuck and it doesn't want to come out relatively easily, you're going to want to visit a repair technician probably and stop taking your own saxophone apart right now. So there you go, there's the saxophone with no keys. You can see the dirt in there. You can see that a lot of these uh, springs, these needle springs are a little bit rusty and dirty. Last thing I'm gonna do is remove this key guard here, but I'm gonna leave the other ones in place. These other key guards, I don't need to remove because I can clean in there with them in place. Okay, there she is, naked. Yeah, you know, this saxophone is not all that dirty, mainly just got dust on it, plus the dried moisture or spit from whatever's coming out of my mouth while I'm playing. You can see a lot of that on the bell and all in here. Now, one thing I'm not gonna be able to do very well in today's video is clean the inside of the saxophone. If I were doing an overhaul on your instrument, I would take the bell, I would remove the bell by undoing these two screws here and maybe desoldering or depending on how it's attached, I'd remove the bell so that I can really get in there and clean the bow and the bell and the inside tube of the saxophone. I don't have a big long bottle brush with me today to clean the inside of the saxophone, but since I swab out my horn every day after every playing session, it's not all that necessary. So now let's take this over to the sink and wash her up. So I've got my soap, I've got my brush. Now, one thing very important to point out is that I want you to use cold water. Um, hot water can remove the lacquer from your saxophone, especially if you've got an older sort of vintage instrument. Do not use hot water. Uh, you could really devalue your instrument that way. So I'm gonna fill this up with a little bit of water and I don't need a ton of soap. You know, I do a little squeeze of soap in there. I just want a little soapy water. I take my brush and I'm just going to brush away all of the caked on crud and whatever is in there. This brush is so nice because it gets in all these little crevices on these tone holes. See that? So you want to go around all these tonals like that. And again, be methodical about it. Like I'm starting at the bell and I'm going to work my way around the saxophone that way. Be careful the sort of um, thing you use. If you, you know, don't use one of those kitchen sponges with the, that are uh, for, uh, that are for pots and pans because you could really mess up your saxophone and scratch it with that. Use something gentle like this natural fiber bottle brush I've got here. And you want to go around all the posts. See how I'm doing? It gets in between all those posts. Now these tonals here, I can get inside them like that. One of the other things that could potentially go wrong here are there are some felts that are attached to the body of the saxophone like these right here. These can accidentally come off while you're cleaning. Uh, now it's not that big of a deal, but it's definitely something you're gonna have to go back and fix later. This area around the palm keys is always very dirty, the left hand keys. Everything basically around tone holes has usually a lot of dried spit or moisture there. So I think I've gotten everything. Let's give her a little rinse off. Now one thing you could do for this bow area here you can get your finger in there pretty good. And with the water, it's gonna loosen up a lot of any, any residue that's on the walls of your saxophone. You can even just use your finger and get to most spots on the inside of an alto saxophone. Now you can let that drip dry, um, but it's good to use a towel. I'm just gonna use some paper towels. If you do let it drip dry, be aware that the, you know, there'll be spots. So it's definitely a good idea to wipe it down if you don't want the spots. Otherwise, what's the point of doing all this? Okay, more or less dry. Let's go put it back together. Now, if I were cleaning the saxophone in order to do an overhaul, I would have removed all of 
the pads from the keys, all of the key felts, all the key corks, washed all those keys as well, but all my pads are fine. I don't need to change them. What I can do is clean off some of the dirtier pads. So here I've chosen my dirtiest pads for you. You can see they're, they're not all that dirty. I bought this saxophone in 2005, 15 years ago. Every single pad is original except for the palm keys. I've changed those. Good saxophone pads can last for decades easily if you take good care of them. So there's no need to get an overhaul every five years or even every 10 years. Uh, a good overhaul should keep you out of trouble for 20 years easily. So what I'm gonna do to clean these is just take a damp cloth and wipe them down. That's it. You can use a little bit of the same dish soap mixed with water to, if you really need to clean them, there we go. Like a brand new pad, brand new 15 year old pad. Now this is a saxophone I played for years before I had my key leaves. And so you can see that my G sharp key and my C sharp key are a little bit damaged because they were always closed and had moisture on them. If I had had these key leaves all of those years, these pads would look the same as some of these other ones that are basically in brand new condition after 15 years of playing hard on this instrument. Now this is a brass horn with, um, with a gold colored lacquer on it. Some people have uh, silver horns. A lot of modern silver horns are gonna come with a clear lacquer over that. Don't use silver polish on a silver plated horn that has lacquer on it. Uh, and really you shouldn't be using silver polish on a silver plated horn that doesn't have any lacquer on it because it makes a big mess and you get that polish stuck in all the crevices. That's a job you really need to leave to a professional. Uh, if you got a silver horn with no clear lacquer protecting the silver, it's gonna go black and tarnished and that's just kind of how it is. Even if you do clean the silver, and get the tarnish off, it's gonna come back in a matter of weeks anyway. So what's the point? You don't need to use any chemicals or anything other than dish soap really on your saxophone, keys or the body. Please don't use any metal polish or anything like that. It's gonna, you're gonna have a chemical residue on your instrument that stays there forever basically. It's gonna smell of that chemical and it's not gonna make it any shinier. Now, while you're doing this, you gotta be careful that you don't uh, accidentally remove any of these corks or felts on the keys. If you do that, you're gonna need to replace them. I talked about how to do that in another video that I will link to in the description below if you wanna see how I change corks and felts. Just a bit of water on these pads can clean them up very nicely. Uh, I want to mention that if you have a saxophone and it smells like it's got like a mildewy odor to it, you're going to have to, and you, if you want to get rid of that smell, you're going to have to remove all the pads, all the corks, all the felts, and really do a more complete job than this because that mildew is going to be in those organic materials. It's also probably going to be in your case. So I recommend first step getting a new case um, so that when your saxophone has been overhauled and you know the smell is gone, you have a brand new case to put it in. Next step, we're going to clean off each one of these hinge rods. The old oil is gonna get removed. We're gonna put brand new fresh oil on all of the hinge rods and the pivot screws. Now, one more thing we could do, which is nice, is cleaning off all of our, our needle springs and giving them a little bit of oil. This helps prevent rust in the future. So what I would do, put a little bit of oil on each spring and then use the spring hook to kind of scrape any spots that might have some rust on there. Now we're ready to start putting the keys back on the saxophone. And this is trickier than getting them off. You need to do it in a certain order. Different models of saxophones 
kind of go together somewhat differently in different spots of the horn. Now here's where we need our cork grease. I'm going to put cork grease in the ends of all of these keys that use hinge rods. I like the cork grease better than oil because it just does a better job in that connection. Now the hinge rod keys, we're gonna clean them out with the pipe cleaners and make sure there's no dirt or old oil in there. Make sure no fuzz or anything gets stuck on the inside. Okay, once I've got the right hand keys in place, I'm gonna put the left hand keys on. All right, now I've got the right hand keys, the left hand keys back on. Now I'm gonna do all the side keys and bell keys and palm keys. I'm gonna put cork grease again in all of the keys that have pivot screws. All right, now that I've got just about all of the keys on here, I'm gonna first get all of the springs back where they need to be. Okay, last step is all the palm keys. All right, it's all done, put back together. It's a long process. I hope by watching me do that, you realize that it's a pretty big job. However, my saxophone is really clean now, so and it's kind of like new, so I'm gonna go play it. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe out there, wash your hands. We're gonna get through this. See you next week with another video.